it's hard to overstate just how important this offseason is for Ryan Poles and the Chicago Bears. These next three to four months will define his legacy as a general manager of this team. You are Locked On Bears, your daily Chicago Bears podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Bears, and I'm your host, Lauren Cox. I'm here to bring you your daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. You can follow me on Twitter at Cox Sports One. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On Bears. You can like Locked On Bears on Facebook. Join the Locked On Bears Facebook group for even more Bears talk. And make sure you hit that subscribe button on the Locked On Bears YouTube channel to keep up with all of our video podcasts as well. Thanks for making Locked On Bears your first listen today. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an NFL general manager and managing your own football franchise? Then this game is definitely for you. To download the free game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on the app stores. Our listeners will get a 100% free boost to your franchise when you use our promo code LOCKED ON in all caps in the game's store. On the show today, we really try and hammer home just how important and how pivotal this offseason is for both the Bears as a franchise and Ryan Poles as an executive, as a general manager, as the man calling the shots in Chicago. We'll talk about how what he does this offseason will set the stage for the future direction of the franchise and have ripple effects into future years that I think will be stronger than anything you see him do next year or anything we've seen him do up to this point in his Bears tenure. Specifically, it'll be a lot of focus on how he spends these free agent dollars that they may never have this much of again and how he spends the draft capital that he may never have this much of again and how pivotal it is that in this year, this group of players that he acquires this offseason need to be the foundation for the long-term success of the general manager. This is go time for Ryan Poles. This is the moment every general manager dreams of having a franchise, a roster, a salary cap, a draft capital that's putty in his hands that he can mold in whatever image he sees fit. The resources are completely available to him. The roadblocks are almost non-existent. There is very little with this organization or this roster that he has to do that is outside of his control, that he's stuck with, right? He's not really stuck with any player. He could have gotten rid of any of them and still can. And presumably he's not having direction from ownership meddling in any of these decisions. He's got salary cap flexibility to get whoever he wants. And he has literally the pick in the draft that would let him take whoever he wants to take. He is in complete control. You know, this is his time because last year as a first year general manager, not that you give him a complete pass for any mistakes he might've made in that year, but that's not the year that the general manager really makes their mark on a team. And it's a year where you can kind of understand why there's a lot of transition and why it's not necessarily going to be reflective of the general manager's long-term plans. This was a GM who inherits a roster that's not his and has to turn things over and kind of deal with half of a team that are not guys that he chose to bring into this organization. He inherited a salary cap situation that was messy, had a lot of money pushed into the future. He needed to eat a lot of dead salary on some bad contracts and move on from some players that fans didn't want to see moved on. 
And of course, in this process of evaluating free agents and draft picks last year, he wasn't working with his own hand-picked scouts. Largely when a GM takes over as late in the process as they do when you get hired, the scouting reports are mostly done from that season from the previous front office's scouts. And so he's dealing with scouts that weren't chosen by him, scouts he didn't choose to have around, scouting reports that he wasn't as involved in correcting. And of course, he brought his own evaluations with him from the Kansas City Chiefs. But still, you're operating in a front office situation that is not fully yours. Now he's had the full 12 months plus now on the job. He's been able to arrange the front office how he wants it arranged, which includes some of the scouts who were here before. It's not that he fired everybody and built out this whole new scouting staff that changes their whole scouting process, but it's at least guys now that he feels like he can vouch for or that he chooses whether they're here or not and isn't inheriting them from the previous general manager solely by without his choice. Same with the pro scouts. Same with you know the rest of his front office of directors of player personnel and college scouting and pro personnel and all that stuff. He's made some changes to how that part of the organization has been made. So it is fully Ryan Poles' front office. It's not fully Ryan Poles' roster, but it's fully to the point where no players on this roster is he stuck with or married to. So now it's not as clean of a slate for a general manager as you can possibly get. And it's why the first year is not necessarily exactly the year that you look at and say, oh, well, that's when he fully sets his foundation. Like, no, the first year was transitioning into the job, dealing with some of the holdover and kind of getting his everything in place. Now his everything is more or less in place. Now is the time when we start really evaluating, okay, Ryan, what can you do with essentially no excuses left? You can't have the excuse of, oh, well, he was stuck with this quarterback. Well, no, he could have traded and still could, I guess, but is not expected to trade Justin Fields. Oh, he's stuck with this bad contract here, that bad contract there. He's gotten rid of those. You know, he's stuck while well, he inherited such a bad salary cap space. And he's not going to have any cap space to ever sign new players. Well, he fixed that too. Well, he inherited a team that traded away all their future draft picks. So he doesn't have any draft capital to work with. He didn't have a first round pick last year. Fair. He does now. He has the first round pick and has more draft capital now than he will at any point. So this is Ryan Poles' time. And it's this year in particular that really will set that foundation and define what his legacy is as the Bears general manager. It really starts with free agency and the amount of cap space the Bears have and why hitting on the money they spend now isn't just about the outside players they bring in, but everywhere that they choose to spend this money. We'll dive into the salary cap and the free agent ripple effect that starts with Ryan Poles this offseason next on Locked on Bears. The Locked on Bears podcast is brought to you by our friends at Ultimate Football GM. It's a super fun mobile app that's free on your phone that puts you in complete control of a franchise. Just as Ryan Poles will define his legacy as a general manager this offseason, you can define your own legacy as a general manager with the Ultimate Pro Football GM app. It allows you to have complete control of a franchise. You're hiring coaches and coordinators. You're making trades. You're signing free agents. You're setting ticket prices. You're dealing with sponsors. And of course, you're navigating through a whole season in a realistic and challenging game world. It's completely free and it's playable offline as well. So you can play on the go whenever you want to, whenever you're waiting in line somewhere or somewhere that you don't have good internet service, maybe on an airplane, et cetera. That's what I was doing on my flights to and from the Senior Bowl a couple of weeks ago. And the good news is Locked On Bears listeners are going to get a 100% free boost to your franchise when using our promo code Locked On in the game store. That's all caps, Locked On. So make sure to check it out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on your app store. That's ultimate-gm.com. Ultimate Football GM, start your dynasty today. If Ryan Poles is going to start the foundation of a dynasty in Chicago, it starts today. It starts this offseason. It's already started in the scouting and evaluation process. But first, it's going to start with free agency where we all know the Chicago Bears have more salary cap space this offseason than any other team in the NFL, which puts them in the driver's seat for signing 
in theory, literally any available free agent that they want because no one can outbid them. That doesn't mean they're going to outbid any team on any free agent to make sure like there's one guy they're just going to spend whatever it takes to get Deron Payne, Javon Hargrave, Orlando Brown, Mike McGlinchey, etc. I don't think we're going to see him blow, you know, top, top dollar all on one player to outbid every other team and say, this is the guy that we have to get because this is a Bears roster that has a lot of holes and a lot of needs and a lot of their own players set to become free agents this offseason that will then lead leave those holes on the roster if you choose not to re-sign them. And how Ryan Poles chooses to spend this money this offseason will really set the tone and set this roster forward either in the positive direction or, I mean, certainly the negative direction is not the right word because can you go any more negative than the number of wins they had this season, but set them off on the wrong foot and limit their ability to be successful. We've seen past Bears general managers miss on big priority free agents. And it has this lingering effect on your team where it's not usually the guy who is just so terrible that it's the biggest laughable mistake ever. It's not always a Mike Glennon level miss, but you know, guys that maybe just get injured and don't play well, they're they're taking a starter star level amount of salary cap space and not producing a starter or star level of production. And that hurts your roster. It brings you down and limits your ability to be as good as you can be because this player or these players that you have invested money in are underperforming to their salary. And that's keeping you behind other teams because you have the player and he's, he's not so terrible that you just have to cut him and cut your losses and move on, but he's not so good that he's earning his money and making you that much of a better team. You have to be able to hit where you spend this money. You have to get it right around Justin Fields. That doesn't all happen in free agency, but free agency is where you need to plug a lot of your largest holes to be able to go into the NFL draft in the most comfortable, flexible, and decision-makingly sound position to draft the best players for your football team and not have to go in saying, we need an edge rusher. So therefore, we're going to take Will Anderson over Jason or over Jalen Carter, even if we think Carter might be the best player. Or later in the draft, right? We need to draft a right tackle because we didn't get one in free agency, so we have to use one of those early draft picks on a right tackle even if there's a better player at another position that isn't as big of a need, right? You can't go into the draft handicapped in that way or forced into certain decisions that way because it's not going to be what's in the best long-term team-building interest of your football team. You also have to look at where exactly you're going to spend that money because it's not going to be all outside free agents filling the 90-plus million dollars in cap space that the Bears have this offseason. It's going to include some levels of contract extensions on their own players. And that's where we come back to with polls. Like he's no longer tied to any of these guys and could get rid of any of these guys if he wanted to. And so if he's going to give Darnell Mooney, Cole Komet, Jalen Johnson, a big contract extension, he needs to be certain that those are players that deserve whatever amount of money that you're going to give them, that they're not getting overpaid and that they're not going to be disappointments on that contract extension. That's not to say that I'm overly concerned about those guys being all of a sudden really bad out of nowhere, but it's about how much you pay them and how much you're getting out of them for what you've paid them, the ROI on the contract extensions that you hand out. Because, you know, the the contract extension you hand out to Cole Komet, for example, you could take that money instead and go sign an outside free agent and a tight end, you know, and, and Evan Ingram or Mike Jacecki or some of these other guys that are available. And you have to be certain, okay, is Cole Komet worth that much money or would that money be better going to a different player at his own position? Same thing with Darnell Mooney. And you know, there's not a lot of free agent options at wide receiver this year, but Jacoby Myers, Juju Smith-Schuster, right? Chase Claypool will also need a contract extension at some point. Like, will these moves and will this money be spent in ways that are in the best interest of the franchise? Are the players that you're spending this long-term money on, outside or internal players, guys that are going to be plus contributors for three, three plus years and maybe three to five years and maybe get a second contract beyond the next contract you give them and become really long-term pieces of this team the same way that we think about 
the NFL draft and and being able to get long term pieces that way because I just don't think Ryan Poles is exactly going to have this much salary cap space again in the future. Once you start handing out these big contracts, they tend to appreciate in value over time. You don't tend to aggressively front load the deals that much. There's some front loading, but it's not going to be all front loaded. These deals will end up costing more over time and you'll, your amount of salary cap space will then slowly reduce over time to some extent. You're likely not going to have this much cap space again. So you have to spend it wisely and make it count because this is your opportunity to make your stamp with your guys, your veterans, your pro scouting on this Bears roster to build around the quarterback position and give Justin Fields the best chance to be successful. Free agency is not the primary long-term method of team building, but given the cap space and given the holes on this roster, it will be a significant part of the process this year. But the real juice, the real, I think, legacy-defining moves come in the NFL draft and stacking up successful draft classes and, most importantly, getting the most out of the significant NFL draft capital that the Chicago Bears have this season. We'll talk about why it's so important not just to nail the pick of the player they get with their first round pick, wherever that might be, but really getting the most out of the actual value that each of your picks have, balancing how good the player is versus how much compensation you could get for getting a slightly less good player. That's next on Locked on Bears. The Locked on Bears podcast is brought to you by our new friends at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Just because the football season is over doesn't mean the betting is over at FanDuel. They've already got odds on next season, including Justin Fields on the list for MVP candidates. You got the Bears odds to win the Super Bowl a bit far down there, but you lay some money down, you can get a very big return there. And if you're new to FanDuel, it's great because new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's free money in bonus bets right back to you if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app because it's safe, secure, and super easy to use. And then you can bet on everything from NFL futures to money lines, point scores, and of course, all the other sports across the spectrum. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a bigger payout with same game parlays. So don't miss your chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NFL and NBA. This NFL draft, even more so, even more so than free agency, is going to really define Ryan Poles' legacy. And, and it's not necessarily that every, you know, any one draft class is always like the one. In order for this team to be successful in the long term, you need to stack draft classes. I want to make sure that's an important caveat that we say at the beginning here. It's not about just nailing this draft class, but it's about getting the picks right this year, getting the pick, picks right next year, and getting the picks right last year as well, making sure that those players pan out and are quality long-term contributors to the Chicago Bears. But because he has the number one overall pick in this draft, this will be, by default, the most important draft Ryan Poles ever has as a Bears general manager because he has the number one overall pick and likely won't ever have the number one overall pick ever again. I mean, the Bears haven't had it in, what was it, 40 plus years? I don't remember the math on the exact last time the Bears had the number one overall pick, but it's been a long time. And presumably, all the money they spend in free agency this year and all the draft capital they have will make this team a significantly better team in 2023 that will win more football games and not be drafting number one, not be drafting top three, not be drafting top five, and likely even not even drafting top 10, depending on how well things go here. And that's a key factor here to remind ourselves that defining Ryan Poles' legacy will not be based on how many games they win this season. I think we should temper our expectations on how many games they win this season. I don't want to get into this whole thing, but like 2024 feels more like the year where it's like playoffs and Super Bowl push 
is when you start having that expectation. But a one-year turnaround going from number one overall pick to certainly Super Bowl contender is not a realistic expectation. And even the playoffs would be maybe a goal, but maybe not an expectation. But regardless, having the number one overall pick, either the player you draft at number one has to be a franchise cornerstone defining player that's here for 10 to 15 years, makes Pro Bowls, is an all-pro player, and a guy that just is a can't-miss, you got him, he's set, and he's one of the superstars on your team, or the trade you make from that number one overall pick has to have a long-term reverberating effect on this roster that you have to be able to get, you know, likely future draft capitals that add to your roster for long term and that the additional picks you get this season builds out a much deeper draft class and you go from, you know, maybe you end up picking eight or nine or 10 guys and maybe you end up picking four or five all in the top 100 or in the first two days of the draft. And like the more of those guys that you have, the more those guys need to contribute. So whether it's one franchise cornerstone guy at number one or you add and get three starting caliber players because of your ability to trade down and maybe still have some of those guys be Pro Bowl caliber starters long term, you need that type of impact from this draft class long term. I'm not not short term. You don't need these guys to make the Pro Bowl as rookies. You don't need these guys to win rookie of the year necessarily. To me, it doesn't matter as much, especially for rookies, what they do their first season, but you do need these players that you draft this year, either with the added capital of trading down or just including the massive player that you get with the number one overall pick. You need them to be the foundational homegrown guys that are the different cornerstones on your roster. The edge rusher that's here for 10 to 15 years, you know, the linebacker who's a the leader on your defense for a very long time, the offensive lineman who locks down, you know, one position and you just know He's our guy. He's solid. We're set there for the next five years plus his second contract. Like you need all these guys to get second contracts from your team or put the team in a position where they've got so many guys that need second contracts that you're not sure if you can afford all of them and you're in a good position. Too many good guys is the kind of situation you need to be here. You need that wide receiver that's just set. He's just a long-term piece here that you know is going to be here for the long run. To me, it's not about the specific positions. It's about finding that archetype of the cornerstone type piece that's there for a long time. The, the way that you kind of feel like Jaquan Brisker is, is maybe not a pro bowl player just yet, but, but has that, like he's going to be here for a while at safety. Certainly we'll see how good he becomes, but you know, you feel pretty solid about he's going to be a starter until his rookie contract runs out. And then depending on things from there, you'll, you'll kind of see it out, but you feel good about that one. You know, those types of players that are plug and play don't even necessarily have to be like guaranteed Starter, high impact guys year one, but guys that certainly become that. You need those types of guys. You know, last year you didn't have that first round pick and it wasn't your scouts like we talked about. So, you know, it's okay if that class doesn't produce superstars, but it does need to have produced some contributors. And we're seeing that with Braxton Jones looking like a starting caliber player. Jaquan Brisker, certainly Kyler Gordon has a lot of upside in that regard. You know, there, there are some starting caliber players here, but now... Now it's Ryan Poles' of scouts. Now it's his big swing. And this draft class needs to be the class that sets the foundation for the franchise for the next five years. We saw it with the Philadelphia Eagles. We talked about it on a podcast a couple weeks ago, how to emulate that Eagles model. Look at that Eagles roster. That offense is littered with their own draft picks. It's all homegrown. They got seven of them on the offensive line. The wide receivers have a first round pick they drafted and a first round pick they traded for A.J. Brown. Their tight end drafted. Jalen Hurts drafted. The running backs drafted by their team, and all those picks worked. All those picks were cost-controlled for a long time and planned and got them to the Super Bowl. Their defense was free agents and mercenaries with some draft picks in there too, but like that's what you need, right? Not all those Eagles draft picks on the offensive line and a tight end, et cetera, were like year one Pro Bowl caliber starters, but they developed, they grew, they got better, and they became high-impact players. That's what the Chicago Bears need from this draft class, especially when you're picking this high in each round, except for the second round. But if you trade down from the first round, you'll probably get a second round pick higher up in that process. When you miss this high, it's really hard to recover. When you miss these opportunities to add either this high call caliber of a player that early in the draft or this many first and second round picks, you're just not going to have 
this amount of draft capital very often. You're never going to pick this high again, and you're le- likely not going to have this many picks for more than a year or two, all as the reverberation of trading down from the number one overall pick. You know what I mean? That's that's what it comes from. It's like this, when they trade down from one, if they trade down from one, that will have an effect on next year's draft, likely. And maybe if you trade down at some point in next year's draft or you make a trade in next year's draft that involves picks from the, the next year, you know what I mean? There's a, a ripple effect of how they handle this draft. And when you're picking this high, it's that much more of an impact on all of the classes moving forward. I just think back to how difficult it was for Ryan Pace to overcome Kevin White being that miss early in his draft classes. Or I think back to Phil Emery and Shea McClellan, right? Like some of these early, I mean, it always hurts to miss any first round picks, but especially the earlier you're picking them, the better the player was supposed to be and the bigger the void is, right? You pick high because it's need-based system. You're allowed to pick that high because you were worse than the other teams. When you don't hit on that ability to get better, you don't then get better and you you end up in this sort of like purgatory where you do get a little better, but not because of that draft pick. So you didn't really get the value of having that pick that the NFL gave you to, to try and increase the parity in the league, right? It just doesn't, it just doesn't easily get erased by all the other draft picks and all the other free agent signings. So that's why it's so important for Ryan Pulse. We, we're going to look back five years from now and say, if he hit these draft classes and nailed some of these free agent signings, that's how the Bears got good. That's how the Bears were set. And if we look back five years from now and say, man, he missed on that first round pick or, you know, missed on a couple of those second round picks, but still got a good player at the first round pick. And man, a couple of those free agents just didn't work. They were busts and kind of were gone after a couple of years. And the Bears just kind of were wasting that time spinning their wheels and underachieving. We'll look back and say, man, he had all that resource, those cap space, the draft picks to change this franchise. And either he did or he didn't. But this is that pivotal moment, and it's super exciting to see what's going to happen this offseason for your Chicago Bears. We're going to break it all down for you, all right here on the Locked on Bears podcast. So make sure you hit that subscribe button wherever you listen to podcasts or on the Locked on Bears YouTube channel. That's going to be the best way to keep up with all of our daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. Thanks for making the Locked on Bears podcast your first listen today. Hope you'll come back tomorrow and make Locked on Bears your first listen again tomorrow and keep coming back five days a week. We're here for you all off season because you have to keep coming back for your next opportunity to bear down. 